any moment now. This for three at the road home. Sanders just got his four. So near, so that's a par four. And Sanders has still got to match it. This is more of a little personal matter between Jacqueline and Harold Henning, who is safely in at three under. Jacqueline has this to remain three under. One of them, or both, will be third. is running down and he's two under now and now back to the 17th tee where Doug Sanders having just made four being one stroke ahead is preparing to drive interminable length of time. Well, I don't think I've ever seen anything exactly like that. Very difficult to stop yourself at that position. He'd begun the takeaway and he's checked his backswing. His grip must have been slippery. Hands perhaps perspiring just a little bit despite the cold. There's his first look, his second. Third, fourth, five, six, seven, eight. Go on, Bob. And get some applause. And he's driven it right in the middle of the fairway. Not very far, however, about 50 or 60 yards short of where Jack Nicholas just drove it. Lee Trevino. Yeah, Trevino's driven at past Sanders some 20 yards. There's yeah, a scene up the 18. 1964 with a huge gale behind Nicholas drove the green four times now he's only just short of it today drama right to the end here he's somewhere near the valley of sin which is that little dip in front of the green and as a matter of fact no fewer than 23 players have had a three at this hole today against tremendous cheer as they come up and who shall wonder Very fine sportsman in every sense of the word. They deserve every hand clap that they get. But it's still just behind them. There lurks Sanders, the leader. But he knows that the 17th is almost the most difficult par four on the course, and he's got to get a par four to keep his one stroke lead. In a moment, maybe a huge cheer as Nicholas gets a three at the 18th.
Now back to Doug Sanders at the 17th fairway, who is, Doug Sanders is about to hit what without any doubt is the most important single golf shot of his life. He may have one or two more today, which will be equally as important, but until now, this is the most important golf shot Doug Sanders has ever had to hit. You may recall that two days ago, Doug Sanders put it just short of this green and then fluffed his approach into the bunker and made a two over par six. Doug Sanders is going at it with a wooden club. A lot of courage. Put it in the bunker to the left. In the bunker? Yep. Yeah. Okay. And a little to the right has been perfect, but yeah. Now Lee Trevino. Freewheeling shot right at the flag of the left side of the green. He's hooked it. And it bounces over the bunker, I believe. And there it is, just to the left of the green. In a position that I'm sure Doug Sanders would give an awful lot to be in. Now we'll come forward to the 18th. That's the back of it. Right hand side. Uh, Nick just drove there, the longest we've seen here. Jacqueline played a good one up, but it's Nicholas upon whom our eye is now. Tremendous finish. Plenty of got a three here. Rosing Sanders took a five out of that bunker at the 17th, which he's approaching at this moment. Quite a long putt. determined not to be short at such a moment that he's gone miles back after that huge drive which he must have absolutely built him. <laughs> Nicholas one behind and so now we must go back to Sanders in his bunker and there you see Doug Sanders surveying the shot. A lot is going to depend upon the lie of the ball here. A lot's going to depend whether he has enough room to take a backswing. He's able to take a stance because the pin is reasonably close in behind the bunker. Close enough at least that you would have to be able to put a little bit of stop on the ball or risk running over onto the road in your third shot, which is a fate that I'm sure no one would want to have transpired to them. Sanders is going down into the bunker. He has sort of a side hill stance. Can't see what position the ball is in. There 
you see it. It's a very difficult line. Spectacular goal shot. And he had to take a very upright backswing there. He had an unbelievable shot under those conditions. There it is on instant replay. He had to take his club very abruptly up into the air. He had as a downhill lie. Brings the club down and keeps moving through. Now we come back to Nictus. What a shot that was, Sanders. But here's Nictus. We should have been nearer than this. Enough to break your heart or break his heart anyway. You couldn't make a better putt at that moment than that. Well, I suppose you could really, but how desperately there. And so after that huge drive it's for Nicholas and he stays and finishes five up. Trevino is putting at 17. Any weekenders might give themselves, but not under these conditions. And we just have time to go ahead. Jacqueline's final putt. Oh, and that's how that's going at the end. But it couldn't quite reach it. And a tired one stays an inch or two short of the hole. <laughs> Never mind. He deserves every chair that he gets. The 17th, where Doug Sanders stands over what must be a very short putt. This for a par four. Well, he's got it. Remains the clear leader, six under par, needing only a four. And the last hole will be the British Open champion. Now they move over from the 17th as the little bunker that he was in played that miraculous shot which nobody who saw it will ever forget. He might be in the road now, still hacking about there, instead of that absolutely stone dead. Tremendous shot at such a moment. As the 18th that awaits him, it's 3:58. Well, Nicholas very nearly drove, drove the green just into that uh, little bit, the bottom. And now Sanders, great moment of his life, most genial, gay fellow, now has this uh, great moment where he has only, as the old golf writers used to say, he has only to do the last hole in four to win the ambition of a lifetime. There's four to win. Uh, he can drive almost anywhere. Yeah. And that's the way to the left on the very safe line.
The Itovino, only a few hours ago, might have thought himself an odds on winner. It wasn't to be. And the crowd now, as they always do, it's sort of almost traditional at St Andrews that when they played their drives, the crowd uh, boxed out for so long, rush in and stand round just behind the ball. There's a historic scene. I don't believe... Nicholas in now with 2.83. Sanders wanting a four for 2.82. This is the easiest four almost. Well, easiest finishing four in golf probably. Except for the Valley of Sin into which you drop if you don't quite hit it hard enough. Or if it suddenly occurs to you in the backswing that if you hit it that hard, it'll go over into the bank at the back. Really a matter simply of controlling your nerve. He has only, as I say, to pitch it up onto the green and get down in two putts now for Doug Sanders to be the champion. He gets a very good chair too. I said before, I'm sure that an American winner will get as sporting a chair from this crowd as our man Jacklin got from the American gallery when he won the championship so little time ago at Tasker, Minnesota, a scene which I personally will never forget. Slim, mauve figure, all on his own out there, approaching the climax of his golfing life. Encouraged by Lee Trevino. You might have hoped that the spotlight would be on him. Fine drives, the hole 358 yards long. No doubt whatever about Sanders at that moment. They're side by side, I'm not sure which it is to play first. Still only one shot in it. Yeah, Sanders, the supreme moment, six under. Nicholas having driven all 30 yards further than that and taken the button, and butted up miles too far and then missed the one back by an absolute hair's breadth. So Nicholas finished with five under on 283. Doug Sanders has only a four here. This is drive to win.
train must be carried out. Well, it's a, it's a long way past, a long way past we haven't finished yet. He's got a judge one. He looks absolutely exhausted. And I don't wonder. The strain here. Really, because partly because golf is so slow. He'd like to go and do that again now. Or go and hit the putt now. But he can't. He's got to wait. Think about it. Lee Tavino started eight under par and is now two under. Unhappy time. Good shot. Good shot. Right, four hours ago, people would have bet on Lee Tavino if he'd money to have won this, but it wasn't his day. But now we haven't finished yet. Of all the greens that I wouldn't want, a long downhill one from the back of to get down in two to win the British Open, this is the first. Give him a sporting hand, which he acknowledges, but he knows better than anybody else that we haven't finished yet. see yourself going into the history books. The man who had only to get down in two putts to win the Open and took three and lost on the play. And the next two or three minutes will decide. sheltered there. What there is, what reaches the green is against him, helps to hold the ball up as it goes down the hill. And quite a sharp slope. Doug Sanders putting down from the back, downhill, quite a left hand borrow. To put about a yard to the left, but it's the length that matters, and something's put him off. And what a moment. to win the Open. Perfect. Oh, Lord. Well, that's not one that I would like to have. And they clap, little knowing what is to come for some. No wonder he licks his lips. So by custom, apart from anything else, Trevino will hole out first and leave the stage set for the man who has the chance to win.
Sound is good for that one. You know, it's still careful. 91. And so now, this is it. And this is what people dream about, that you've got this one with a left-hand borrow downhill on the last green at St Andrews to win the Open. Certainty. Yes, that's the side you're bound to miss. And there it is. And there, but for the grace of God. I knew it when he hit that second so far past. I knew that was what was coming. Everything. I believe that we'll see Jack Nicholas uh, turn one loose here also. Uh, and it wouldn't surprise me at all to see him uh, put it right in the middle of the green well he's taken his sweater off so that's presumably so he can open his shoulders a bit more and he's made it <laughs> he's made it he's going through the green <laughs> well now he has problems he's driven through the green and he has got problems this is fantastic this calls for superb judgment and it's oh he's only just missed it on the right what a fantastic shot to play at a time like this One stroke advantage to Nicholas in the rough at the back of the 18th green. Oh, what a good shot he's played. Left a little short. A little short. But he still has this one vital stroke advantage over Sanders. Nicholas has this to win the Open. Oh, he's got it! He's got it! And that's it. And that settles it. He threw the club up and he nearly caught Sanders with it as it came down. And Nicholas wins the open and denies Sanders the chance of the putt on the final green and you won't ever get a more dramatic finish than that. And that was the putt that Sanders should have sunk last night and none of this today would have been necessary.